Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to update you on my favourite sunscreens. One not so favourite, but the rest are going to be favourites. It's attempting to be summer here in England, so I thought now is the perfect time. I've been testing a lot of sunscreens um, throughout the last month, but also since winter. I wear sunscreen all year round and I've got some firm favourites here. Any sunscreens that I've mentioned in a previous favourites video is still my favourite sunscreen. I just chop and change and obviously I like testing new ones. I still like and probably still use so I will link those videos in the description down below so you can check those out too. I will also be as always talking exclusively about Korean or Japanese. Do I have a Japanese sunscreen? No, mainly Korean sunscreen in this video because they are the best. And you will not be seeing anything less than SPF 50. Oh, I just want to talk about one, um, where is it? Before we get into some of my new favourites, I just want to share my opinion of the Claire's Midday Blue UV Shield. This is their newest mineral sunscreen. As you know, the Claire's Soft Airy UV Essence is one of my favourite sunscreens of all time. This is a chemical sunscreen, organic, non-organic. Retail calls it chemical and mineral, so we're just going to stick to that. But I want to start with this because I've been asked so much about it, so I'm just going to give you a quick review. Um, I was actually sent this before the launch of the product. Some of you may have seen it in the background of my videos by accident. And this is apparently an updated version, but I didn't know this was there was an old version of this, but I have very, very mixed feelings about this. Um, pretty much doesn't smell like anything other than sunscreen and it has that blue tint to it again because of guazoline which um, is nice and soothing and it's in another one of their products my one of my favorite products of all time the midnight blue calming cream um, so it has got that um, calming sensation to it again this is broad spectrum 50 plus PA 4 pluses it's fine going by the description of this product I thought it was going to be lightweight and hydrating it's lightweight but it's not hydrating by any means whatsoever, I would say. But whilst this doesn't leave much of a white cast, it leaves a tiny white cast that is something that's still a little bit noticeable um, when you first put it on, but it does kind of um, calm down on the skin, like dies down. It is not in any way hydrating whatsoever. In fact, I think it has the opposite effect. I found it, it dried down on my skin and my skin felt very tight. Um, like I used a bar of soap on my skin, that's how this felt, um, even a couple of hours after putting this on. What's even worse worst for me is it left my skin looking matte and I do not like that look on my skin. Um, I like a glowy dewy look which is why I prefer the chemical sunscreens. I like glowy dewy honey skin not chalky. <laughs> I felt no irritation. It applies very very nicely. If you like matte skin you will like this. Um, easy to spread around the face um, but it, it just had more cons than pros for me. Let's talk about sunscreens I do like. This is the Coxeer, 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 Coxeer Ceramide Daily UV Sunblock. This is a brand that I keep buying products from, um, that never use. I've got so many of their products. I've got like two toners, I've got an exfoliator, I've got a cleanser, like, and I've just never opened their products. But with sunscreens, they're the type of product that I open straight away and use straight away, because I just want to put them to the test instantly. This is an odd one, but a nice one. So their main selling point is the Ceramide NP in this ingredient ingredient list. Also that it contains hyaluronic acid and aloe vera. All nice things to have in a sunscreen but all nice things to have in a moisturizer as well. And this is one thing I do love about Korean sunscreens is that they tend to be sunscreens with moisturizing benefits. So as someone with oily skin, I wouldn't mind skipping my moisturizer in the summer when I want to be layering up less and going straight onto a sunscreen with those moisturizing benefits. So ceramide is basically the building blocks of our skin. Hyaluronic acid, of course, is a humectant, adding that hydration, temporarily plumping our skin, and aloe vera is very calming and soothing, also moisturizing. Hyaluronic acid, not so much, but other than that, you've got some of my favorite ingredients in there. This also contains glycerin, which is a nice humectant as well, my favorite alternative to hyaluronic acid. Um, what else do you have in there? Oh, Camilla Sinesis leaf, green tea extract, and here's so some antioxidants, again, soothing. Overall, making this a nice, hydrating, moisturizing, soothing sunscreen. This has a mix of inorganic and organic UV filters in. Again, chemical physical, which I don't care either way, to be honest, I don't mind either filters. I just tend to opt for the chemical side of filters because um, they, go better on my skin. They don't leave a white cast on my somewhat darker than Caucasian skin, but this looks and feels just like your average everyday moisturizer on top of your skin. Very similar is the Sol Wasil, I can't pronounce that too, I'm so sorry, um, Snow Wise Brightening UV Protector. This is SPF 50+, PA4+. 
This is just the mini version. I like it when brands do minis because um, even if it's like you don't like it, you can use it like on your hands or on your neck or the back of the ears or something. Um, but it's good to test out a product like a sunscreen that you're using every day and that a lot of people do find potentially quite irritating. It's nice to have a little, little test. <laughs> this sunscreen's main selling point is that it has a glow to your skin. It has this tone up cream kind of factor to it. If you're not familiar with tone up creams, these are creams, mainly popular in Korea, that aim to target discomfort coloration and redness and evens that out, evens out your skin tone temporarily whilst you're wearing it. So it's kind of like a hybrid of um, moisturizer and makeup. However, if you do get a cheapy bad tone-up cream, it can just look like white paste on your face, but good tone-up creams go on a little bit white, but then settle nicely onto the skin, helping reduce redness and other um, imperfections on your skin. This one offers a softer glow, so you do get a peachy one that was like maybe like would have wouldn't have sat right on my skin. But again, another broad spectrum sunscreen that is alcohol free. And this is another like combination sunscreen. So you've got mineral and chemical sunscreen in one. And again, this is another kind of hybrid. So you've got your chemical and your physical UV filters in here too. This contains what is thought to be one of the best and most effective UV filters ever discovered in the world at the moment. I can't pronounce it, so it will be here to Unfortunately, it isn't FDA approved, so you're not gonna see this in America. Titanium dioxide as well as that long ass one. Some fatty alcohols in here. Glycerin, honey, again. So it's, it's, it's a sunscreen that I would skip a moisturizer for, then just go straight onto this. So it does have those moisturizing properties, moisturizing hydration locking ingredients that pretty much anyone can benefit from. If you do have dry skin, this is a nice one, but it's also not too heavy for oily skin. But yeah, I'll probably be getting a full size version of this one. Oh, this one's good. Where is that one got? This next sunscreen I've used up in almost a month. I absolutely love it. This is Lagom, I think they're pronounced. Lagom. <laughs> That's not funny. This is a cellless sun gel sunscreen, SPF 50 plus PA, four pluses again. This is a chemical sunscreen that's perfect for those with oily skin. It's liquidy and lightweight, but it's not too fluidy like water. So you get a really good even spread. It sinks almost instantly into the skin. It's quite alcohol heavy, but it doesn't feel drying whatsoever. Um, I'm kind of like mixed skin at the moment, so it doesn't feel drying on my dry parts. The product description does say it's deeply moisturizing. I wouldn't describe it as deeply moisturizing at all but it doesn't take away any moisture. So I would still use this with a moisturizer. Of course, it says it leaves no white cast and like most chem chemical sunscreens, it doesn't, but it's just the way this sits on your skin. You put it on and you just watch it disappear into the skin. You can layer this up and layer it up and layer it up and it doesn't feel any heavier, like not even the tiniest bit. Like most of these sunscreens, I'm perfectly comfortable to layer up during the day. If I know I'm gonna be out and I'll be religiously applying, reapplying every two hours, this is the kind of sunscreen I'd want. It does say it's been allergy tested. There are a few essential oils in it. Again, essential oils are something I don't look for, but I also try to avoid. But if it's in a product I like, I'm not like, oh, I just kind of like, you know. <laughs> this hasn't irritated my skin at all. It's not stung my eyes and it's also cruelty free. This is a brand that I have a lot of products from. And because of this sunscreen, I'm like desperate to try out the rest. Oh, here's an interesting one. So I'm just warning you now, the next one I haven't got a lot of information on because I threw the packaging away. As I mentioned, I opened all sunscreens when I get them, then I kind of like throw the packaging away and I couldn't find a proper ingredient list online. So I'm a little bit, a little bit like, oh, I don't really know what this is, but I, I've been really, really enjoying it. This is the Labwat, Labwat UV Veil No Sebum Sun Mist. And this is probably one of the only like no sebum mattifying products that I'll ever use ever. So this is a mist and they're perfect for reapplication. So if you're wanting to reapply over makeup, these are probably the way to go. What I like about this one in particular is the packaging. It's not a solvent aerosol mist. It's just like a normal, look how misty that is. So you don't have to worry about like not breathing it in or anything like that. With these kind of spray mist reapplications, you do have to be thorough. You do have to make sure you're spraying enough and covering enough of your skin. In a lot of those like UV camera tests you see, um, UV mist tend to leave your protection a little bit patchy. So it is important to get everywhere. Going back to the mattifying thing, this doesn't dry you down. This doesn't get rid of any oils. What this does, is just kind of refreshes your skin, leaving you with a nice glow. So rather than like um, giving you that like powdery matte finish, this doesn't do that. This isn't of course an alternative to applying normal um, 
sunscreen, but this is good for those reapplications. What I do like to do um, is use this around the ears. I hate applying sunscreen to like the back of my ears and on my ears. I find it really difficult to do, so I just use this. Sometimes with this mist, you do get like little white droplets on your skin that you can just pat in. It might be a little bit different if you're using makeup, but just give it a good shape before you use it and it's absolutely fine. That's literally all the information I've got on it. It's SPF 50 plus PA, four pluses again. But I, I, if anybody can find a decent ingredient list that is not different to all the other ingredients, ingredient list, let me know because I couldn't find an exact ingredient list for this. So yeah, they are my current favorite um, sunscreens that I've been using, enjoying, testing. Let me know what you thought of um, this. Let me know if you liked it. I, I've had a lot of mixed reactions to it. I, I, I'm a little bit disappointed by it. I just wish it had like I didn't that glow to it rather than just a mattifying look but let me know your favorite sunscreens in the comments down below the ones I must try leave them down below all products of course will be in the description box but that is it from me now guys I will see you next time